Psst. I've been wearing the same pants for the last two episodes of The Crackdown. We can't see your pants. There's still the same ones on my body. The national emergency is already facing stiff opposition from multiple states in the union as details emerge about a sketchy nuclear deal with Saudi Arabia. Also, China is continuing to push for a weird dystopian technology. Plus, what do we know about mice and Morgan Dining Hall? We've got the goods and the goods are news. From WHIP, I'm Maya Tejada and this is your WHIP Weekly News Crackdown. <laughs> Sixteen states filed a lawsuit on Monday over President Trump's declaration of a national emergency in order to fund a southern border wall, a decision we covered in depth last week. In the suit, the states claim that Trump cannot construct the wall without permission from Congress and that it is unconstitutional for him to divert funds. The lawsuit also says that the, quote, federal government's own data prove that there is no national emergency at the southern border that warrants construction of a wall. Customs and Border Protection data show that unlawful entries are near 45-year lows. They're referencing the same data we showed last week. Apprehensions at the border are currently around the 1970s levels. The states filing the suit are California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Hawaii, Illinois, Maine, Maryland, Michigan, Minnesota, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Oregon, and Virginia. The defendants named are President Trump, the Departments of Defense, Treasury, Interior, and Homeland Security, and the senior officials of those departments. The Trump administration sought to fast track a transfer of American nuclear information to Saudi Arabia and a new interim report report from the House Oversight and Reform Committee suggests that the law may have been violated in the process. The report, which was issued on Monday, recalls several whistleblowers warning of political appointees ignoring ethics advisors. They also warned of, quote, conflicts of interest among top White House advisors that could implicate federal criminal statutes. Top ethics advisors have ordered senior officials in the Trump administration to halt the transfer, citing several conflicts of interest between the administration and Saudi Arabia, specifically former national security advisor Michael Flynn was a major driver for the effort. This matters because Flynn also worked as an advisor to the IP3 International, a private company seeking to build nuclear pants. Nuclear <laughs> pants? There it is. Uh. This matters because Flynn also worked as an advisor to IP3 International, a private company seeking to build nuclear plants in Saudi Arabia. The report also states that Derek Harvey, a senior director at the National Security Council, repeatedly ignored warnings of whistleblowers and insisted that the transfer of information to Saudi Arabia has already occurred. The committee has said it will conduct an investigation into the matter. By the way, China's up to some futuristic stuff and it's pretty spooky. Chinese news outlet Xinhua announced Tuesday that it had, in collaboration with the search engine Songwu, created the world's first female AI news anchor. The anchor, known as Jing Xiaomeng, will make its debut during the upcoming two sessions political meetings at the start of March. This is not Jinghua's first experimentation with robots and journalism. They debuted the world's first male AI news anchor, Q Hao, during China's annual World Internet Conference held in November of 2018. Since launching in November, Jinghua has published 3,400 reports, totaling over 10,000 minutes in length from its AI reporters. Oh hey, YouTube's in the news! Wait, oh no. Many major brands, including Nestle and Epic Games, have stopped buying advertisements on YouTube. Why? They don't want to be associated with the growing number of pedophiles lurking in the comment sections. A YouTube user pointed out earlier in the week that a growing number of videos, such as young children doing gymnastics or playing games, were being targeted by pedophiles. Specifically, individuals would post timestamps of compromising frames in videos and make suggestive remarks. In response to the controversy, YouTube disabled the comment sections of millions of videos and deleted over 400 accounts for inappropriate commentary. However, this is not the first time YouTube has come under fire for its lack of comment regulation. Two years ago, YouTube faced similar backlash from companies over their advertisements appearing alongside content that promoted terrorism, hate groups, and the exploitation of children. Yuck. Gross. All around. A U.S. Coast Guard lieutenant was arrested after federal investigators found weapons and ammunition in his home. Authorities say that Christopher Paul Hassan, a self-identified white nationalist, had been planning a domestic terrorist attack targeting politicians and journalists. Court records reveal that he had been stashing supplies and weapons since 2017 and had developed a list of targets, which included Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. His internet history included phrases like, best places in D.C. to see congresspeople and our Supreme Court justices protected. In a letter sent to a neo-Nazi leader, Hassan said that he believed that he could make change, quote, with a little focused violence. 
we've got one more doozy for you before we get to campus news. Empire actor Jesse Smollett was arrested by the Chicago police Thursday on a felony charge for disorderly conduct for allegedly filing a false report claiming that two men attacked him. Smollett's reports to police last month said that two men yelled racist and homophobic slurs, tied a rope around his neck, and poured an unknown substance on him, drawing national attention and support. After investigating the men who were involved, Chicago police see that Smollett paid the two brothers $3,500 to carry out the assault. They provided evidence, including a copy of the check used to pay them and phone records that show Smollett speaking to the brothers before and after the assault. At a bail hearing on Thursday, a judge set Smollett's bail at $100,000 and he was released that afternoon. Smollett maintains that the attack happened as reported. Fox, which owns the popular hip-hop drama Empire, which Smollett stars in, cut him from the last two episodes of the season on Friday. We've been having some rough news the past few weeks. Maybe campus news will be a little smoother. Temple University created a $1.5 million scholarship fund on February 18th for first-generation college students. Named the Broad Street Line Finish Line, the scholarship will be available to new and current undergraduate students starting in fall of 2019. It will also give preference to Philadelphia residents. Recently admitted students are already being considered for individual awards of up to $5,000. Current students will also be able to apply for the award if they have a specific hardship slowing down their graduation process. To do so, students can submit an appeal of their 2019 financial aid package to Student Financial Services. Temple Student Government President Gotti Zimmerman delivered the first ever State of the Union address speech on Monday. They really missed an opportunity to call it the State of the University. Darn. His speech focused on the initiatives and changes accomplished by Ignite to You, the current administration, since April of 2018. He discussed the Ignited Movement Scholarship and TSG's Awareness Week for Mental Health, Campus Hunger, and Sexual Assault. He also addressed the shift made by the administration to bi-weekly town hall meetings instead of a weekly general assembly meeting. Zimmerman said that he is proud of the collaboration between the executive branch and the parliament branch this year and all that they have accomplished. Now for the real spicy meatball of a story that's been cooking up all month long. A student claimed that she found a mouse in her food while eating at Temple's Morgan Dining Hall on February 5th. Kaylee Politz, a sophomore journalism major, said that after getting rotisserie chicken and Spanish rice, she saw what appeared to be a tail on her plate and found what she alleges was a mouse. Aaron Mark responded to her claims by saying that it was a chicken wing, not a mouse. The city then inspected Morgan Dining Hall kitchen and found mouse droppings along the perimeter of the kitchen's hallway and underneath food equipment, according to city records. The inspection report states that the kitchen needs to be clean in problem areas, and until it does, Morgan Dining Hall is in violation of the Philadelphia Health Code. That's disgusting. Yuck. Okay, we better take a break before we get news poisoning. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share if you like the way we deliver the news to you every week. And join us next week for a very special episode of The Crackdown. Don't want to miss it. From WHIP, I'm Maya Tejada, and this has been your WHIP Weekly News Crackdown.